Thank you very much. If my mother could hear that introduction. <laughs> uh, welcome, folks. My name is Mark Conroy. I'm working with a company called Anertech in Ireland. We use mostly Drupal for building websites. I don't have <laughs> huge decoupled experience, but I want to. So I'm, I'm, I'm new to Gatsby. I'm new to React. Um, uh, I'm most well known for uh, criticizing static um, mock-up tools like Photoshop and Sketch and specifically Envision. That's that's the one I <laughs> everyone seems to know my, my criticism of. Uh, and, and talking that at conferences um, about Pattern Lab and design systems and how we can get away from, from the static lifestyle towards towards uh, delivering designs in the browser. For that reason, there's nowhere I would rather be right now than the other presentation that's going on, <laughs> where Rebecca's going to talk about how to build a design system that, that, that your uh, agency can, can use. Um, so today what we're going to do is have, have a, a look at Gatsby. So Gatsby, it's a static site generator. If you want to know what a static site generator is or why you might use a static site generator, travel back in time about one hour head to Phil Hawksworth's talk. Uh, that, that was brilliant. Uh, so what, what, what Gatsby does is it's, uh, it, it uses React uh, to take your, your data. So uh, that could be local data that you have in a folder for your images, and it could be local data that you have for uh, um, uh, different pages on your website, or it can be data that's stored on a server somewhere. So in our case, we use Drupal. We expose our data uh, via JSON. Um, so it looks like something like this. So this, this is a listing page for uh, articles or an individual article and then it, it takes this data and it builds a static version of each page on your website. We can then use that to deploy it to Netlify or to deploy it to uh, um, GitHub pages or deploy it to wherever, wherever you want and it can, it can serve the site then uh, very, very fast. So Gatsby has a <coughs> A focus really on performance that that we can we can get the the, the best performance from our websites by automatically include, including things like say code splitting that uh, you only get the code that that page needs um, the the CSS for the, for the, for that page is embedded in the head of the page so it's 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 inline so everything is is as, as fast as it can be so we're going to look at a couple of things um, today let's see and somewhere along here yeah okay. Um, oh, actually, I made a presentation, didn't I? Right. <laughs> okay, I cover most of that. Um, I, I'm a Drupal core maintainer for what's called the Out of the Box Initiative. The Out of the Box Initiative it was an initiative we started that when you install Drupal, it looks kind of ugly and it doesn't really do anything in, in particular. Uh, so myself and Christina here and some other developers, we we set about uh, creating a a website from Drupal with using only Drupal core um, uh, functionality for a recipe uh, magazine or a, a food magazine. We call it Umami, and it gives us a homepage and it gives us some lists of of content and it, it gives you a listing page of our articles and then you can go to see uh, individual articles if, if you want. Um, so I'm going to use this as the base for our content uh, in part four of the presentation today. Um, I can't remember my next sentence. <laughs> so this is going to be the content for part four. Yeah, and on, until part four, we'll, we'll use kind of static static um, uh, uh, content. So we're looking at um, four parts to today's talk. Where is this here? Uh, the first part will be just installing Gatsby uh, default. Has anyone installed Gatsby yet? Okay, I have no idea why we asked those questions at presentations. I don't have a second presentation. If people, everyone has, or, or, or no, no one has, but uh, it's nice to see so, some people have. You probably know more than I do at this stage. So if if, if I'm incorrect, uh, please feel free to, to correct me. Um, I got an email from the Front and United uh, people when I was proposing this talk that the founder of Gatsby could be in the audience. Um, if you are, <laughs> hello, <laughs> and I'm sorry. Uh, in 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 part two, we'll we look at cr uh, creating some new components in in Gatsby. So so in in part one, you you get say a default header. So we look at changing the header to add a menu and th things like that. And then we look at adding new pages. And in part three, then we look at styling the website. So um, if you want to use rather than uh, 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 CSS in JS, you want to use SAS, and you want to write your CSS in CSS, or you want to write SAS in a SAS file. Um, how strange that sounds now. 
uh, and then we look at uh, typography.js, which was also uh, uh, created by the Gatsby folks, but but it's a separate project for setting up vertical rhythm and line heights and things like that. Uh, and then we're going to look at part four, getting dynamic data. So this is where we'll, 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 let, we'll plug our Gatsby site into our Drupal site and we'll, we'll pull in a JSON feed. And then we'll have Q&A. Like I say, I'm kind of new to React and Gatsby, so hopefully the Q&A will be very short and concise. And then I like to have a drink and a chat later on, so you can, you, you can find me. Okay. Oh, that's much better. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I'm not going to go through, through, through something like setting up uh, NPM, something like getting Gatsby. It, it's, it's simple enough in terms of go to the website and it'll tell you how to install it. So I'm going to presume everyone can get that far. And then to, to, to create a site, you just type in your terminal when you've got the Gatsby CLI, Gatsby uh, start new or Gatsby new, I can't remember the exact, exact words, and you get that. And then Gatsby's got, got a couple of different things then, so this is where we're going to start. So here, um, I, I know this says it's live demo, it's not actually as live as, as, as uh, you might like. It's, it's, it's uh, six different Git branches with the exact code I want in each of them. So in part zero here, we, we, we're going to turn, there's three kind of things that, that we, could, we could talk about. Number one is uh, there's a command called Gatsby develop. Uh, so when we run Gatsby, Gatsby develop, that's going to uh, load up a localhost server at port 8000 and serve the site for us with uh, hot reloading and things. So anytime we change a file, the, the, the website's going to update instantly. Oh, crap. <laughs> what could go wrong with a live demo? Where is this going? Gets me. Oh, I have it running already. Great. So, no. Now that's probably going to stop the other one. Say nothing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the other thing then you, you can do is is Gatsby um, Gatsby serve, and that 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 uh, creates a server at port nine thousand rather than eight thousand, and that that serves the production version of the website rather than the development version of it. So all, all the assets in that are, are are condensed and compressed, and then you can run Gatsby build, and Gatsby build will will build the production version that that that's going to get served at port port 9000 and that's the version that you'll deploy to github pages or to netlify or to wherever you you uh, you want to host it so if we come back here i can close this one down now and finish with that and refresh this and that's 9000 8000 okay so we'll pretend we've we've installed gatsby gatsby cli started a new project and uh, get to the, get to our website this is what you see <coughs> Starts off with a, with a header uh, saying Gatsby default starter, a small little bit of text and an image and then a link here to page two. So that's good in terms of you can copy and paste what's in page two to create a new page or whatever and you can get started straight away. But there's not really, um, uh, looking at it from, from the outset, it doesn't look like there's a huge amount. So we'll move from there to uh, get, uh, get check out part one. Okay. I haven't actually changed anything in Gatsby in terms of I haven't added new plugins, I haven't added new functionality, but I've just uh, changed a few things here that when we refresh this page. Okay, so I've changed a few things so we can actually see what are the interesting things in Gatsby. So the first interesting thing in Gatsby is is this link component. So when you want to link from one page to another page or, or, or one section of your site to another section of your website in React, uh, or in Gatsby, you use a link component rather than an A tag. If you use an A tag, it links and refreshes the page because it does what an A tag is supposed to do. If you use a link component, what it does is it just calls the component that you want to load and loads just that one small component. So if we go back here to the home page and we click on link component, you'll notice here that, or you might, uh, the header doesn't change at all. It stays exactly where, where it is. So the only thing changing here is this body area. Same as if we if we click on the image component. Oh, this is going to happen, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's okay. I know what the problem is with that one. Um, we click on say the layout component again. Nothing changes in the header. Nothing will 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 change in, in the footer. So one of the, one of the, the performance uh, things with with this is that I should go back to link because I don't want to give you all that information before beforehand. We don't want to peak too soon. Uh, with, with, with the link component, it just renders the actual component we need. So what, what's cool about this in, in React is that it, it, uh, it means your page is going to be much faster. What's even better about this in Gatsby is that any uh, thing on your page that is called via the link component, Gatsby will go and prefetch that for you and have it 
it's kind of a low level prefetch. Have it kind of ready, just in case you're ever going to going to load it. And then if you hover over anything on 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 the website that has a, a uses the link component, when you hover over it, then it actually goes and gets the full version of it. So by the time you actually go to click on the on the link, it will have loaded in in your cache. And again, the, you you can understand the, the performance benefits of of that. Okay, we we'll look at then at the image component. Now this took me about uh, four hours to figure out. I need to stop my server here and start it again just to compile my images. Uh, actually, let's see, where's the index? Yeah, sorry, I should have shown as well what the link component looks like. So up here at the top of our file, we're going to import link from Gatsby. And within Gatsby, Gatsby will be importing link from, from React because it, it used the, the React link component and then it kind of adds some sugar on top of it. But it's it's very simple to, to, to understand what happens. You say link to and where you want to link to. And then you close your link. So it's, it's pretty much the same as a as a, an anchor, anchor tag. Uh, the image component then, images are, are tricky in web design, especially in modern web, because we've got mobile devices and we've got tablets and we've got uh, desktops and we've got watches and we've got billboards. Um, I hope you can read the text at the back, folks. We couldn't find a bigger screen. Um, <laughs> Uh, but so Im images are tricky because you want to use the picture element. You want to resize the images. You want an image to be square on a mobile. You want it to be light landscape on a on a desktop. Um, you've got an image, and the image here won't open up because it's, it's too large. This image is four point three six megabytes, and this one here is four point three two. And you don't want to you don't expect your content editors to know uh, Photoshop and want to have to crop all the images to correct sizes and one X sizes and retina sizes. Gatsby looks after all this for us with the image component. Um, it takes the image, it does all the resizing for us, it uses the picture element, and depending on what device you're on, it, it, it serves that, that for you. So that's that's uh, pretty cool. It took me ages to figure out how to use it because when I looked at the image component in my component section here, I thought, oh, okay, I can figure this out. There's a GraphQL query to find it. It's It's Gonna call the image uh, Gatsby Astronaut. I can see Gatsby Astronaut is over here. Yep, that's fine. I can work with that. So I was in my uh, index file and I was see the images added here. That's fine. We imported the image from our components image. Yep, all looking good so far. And I come back here to my home page, and there's the image. So why could I not see the image on my website? Well, it turns out that the image component in Gatsby is an example of how to use the image component. So <laughs> when I was trying to import the image component, or I think that's what happens anyway, when I was trying to import the image component, I couldn't get it to work. So I had to, had to go and use what they have done and, and do it myself. So what, what we got here is a image component page. And the image component page, I've uh, had, I create my own GraphQL query here. And I call one image, image Atens. And I say that this is going to be a fluid image, and the max width this image can be is 1,000 pixels. Then there's these parameters here for making it fluid and sharp, and you can uh, say where the crop focus is going to be, and say if you wanted to have it square, and all this kind of stuff. So I haven't added that in. I've created a second image then called Image Berlin. Now, Gatsby Image, by default, will look at the image, and it will it will get the, the point of, of most interest, or I'm not sure what the exact phrase is, and it uses that point as the, as the center point. So in my image here, it decided that say the block of flats behind me is the most important thing, not me or the Acropolis. <laughs> uh, in Berlin, it decided that the Berlin Wall was was, was the most important thing. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting if we look at this, uh, this is 4.2 megabytes in the repo as we saw and my code editor wouldn't even open it up because it's so big. In Gatsby, it's 134 kilobytes and I did nothing. All I did was I added an image into my image directory and I added my GraphQL query here. So if I've got one more image, say here, and I want to call this image um, front end, I can do that, and I'll call frontend.jpg here and drop that in. And there we go. I've got lazy loading images. I've got responsive images. I've got retina images, and I've done absolutely nothing uh, except use use the Gatsby image component. Okay, let's see what else is interesting from from the get-go. There's a layout component. So the layout component is uh, pretty simple. It is, let's see here. What this does is it puts in a header here at the top. 
and it uses a prop for the site title that it gets from a data file that comes, uh, sorry, a JSON file that comes with, with Gatsby. So, um, and then it, it gets the main body and it will print this uh, children variable for whatever goes in here for the page content. And then it's got a, a footer as well. So when we create um, a page, so in this case here, we say index is our homepage. We use layout here and we then, uh, <clears throat> whatever gets printed inside here will be our body. And then we end layout here and this is where our footer will, will, will get printed. And the, the content then for say for the page title and, and things like that comes down here at the uh, Gatsby config, I think, yeah. So that's Gatsby JS uh, intro, um, as well as the layout component. Then we've got, and you can create obviously different different layouts for different sections of your website. We've got the SEO component. So the SEO component will take data from again the same Gatsby config file here, and it, it will have the Gatsby JS intro as our title. We've got a description field. We've got an author Mark Conroy. That's my my my, my Twitter handle, uh, and then we can add in whatever we want there. But we can override that on a per page basis. So for example, here on, on my SEO component page, so this is the SEO component page here. I've said that the title is going to be Gatsby SEO. So it should say Gatsby SEO up here, it does. And if you go back to the homepage, it says Gatsby JS intro. So that, that lets us over, override it. And then I've said there's some keywords that no search engine is going to use can go in here. And there's a description tag here. And then we can continue on putting in more metadata here if we want for uh, for author and for uh, uh, image and whatever else um, we might want for, say, Twitter cards or um, schema.org stuff. Okay. <clears throat> and what else is interesting? Yeah, creating new pages. I love this with Gatsby. To create a new page in, in Gatsby, what you do is create a file in your page directory and that's it. Everything else is done for you. All the code splitting is done. All the uh, responsive images is done. Everything else. So if we want to create a page here called, um, let's say we'll call one uh, FE 2019. So FE 2019.js. We now have a page called FE 2019. And it's as, it's, it's as easy as that. So we'll create a new page and we'll call it 2019 just so you we know I'm not telling lies. There you go, and you can see how, how fast that that reloads with with no reload of, of the of the browser. So that's that's kind of what you get with Gatsby straight away when you install. You get kind of that much and and, and more, but that's enough to kind of get us started and to get us moving on to uh, check out part two. Okay, the fails to compile, so I need to stop my dev server. Start it again. I gave this presentation a couple of times in work um, with no success. Every time, every time everything broke, every time I wanted to change uh, to a new Git branch, uh, because things were compiling, it, it decided that I had a merge conflict with 500 files and things like that. So this is, this is going well so far. <laughs> okay. Right, so now we're on part two. Oh, I probably should have said as well, there, there is a code repo here with all, all the code for this. And you can follow along with where things are, and you can click on these links here that will bring you to what you can see on my on my screen and things like that. So we're we're looking here at the moment, on, and it's on GitHub.io slash Mark Conroy. You, you'll you'll find it find it there. So we're looking here at part two. So things have changed a little bit. Um, what's changed here, and I'll, I'll show you show you how, how we've done it. Well, we had no menu a moment ago. We had a link at the bottom of the home page, a link to page two, but that, that wasn't a menu, so that wasn't going to be on other pages first. So we've created a menu component. We created a footer component because we saw in the layout component, the footer was hard coded into the, into the layout. And uh, we, added, we edited the header component. So we saw again in the layout component, it imported the header component, um, but the header didn't have a menu in it. So we, we, we created a menu component on its own, and then we create a header component to put in, into it. And then we edit the layout component Sorry to to, uh, to use these these uh, two new components. Um, so the first thing, the, the menu component, you can see here that we've got the exact same menu at the top and the bottom, except they're different. So uh, when I show you the code, we'll see that we create a menu component and I create some React props for it to give it some classes. So I give it a class of uh, uh, back, a class class of dark or class of light, and then give it a class of whether it's a mobile menu or not. Now this is a very simple, ugly kind of mobile menu, but you can see see it works there. But the bottom one doesn't have that. So it's it's, it's nice that we we can import components and use components, but they can they can function differently uh, depending on, on what classes or, or whatever we give them. So the menu component is up here in our components directory. 
and this has a um, what's special about this? Okay, we call in the props, and then where? Is, oh yeah. So we, we give it a nav here, a class name equals props.menu class. So when we use this in the header, we can say import menu with um, menu class equals uh, and then background dark or, or whatever we want. Um, this is interesting here, we're using class name. Class name, we have to use rather than class because in JavaScript, class is reserved for uh, uh, something else. Um, and we are writing writing this in JavaScript, so this is the menu.js file. Um, so interesting things about this is we use the link component constantly here to link to where we want to, and that means then we get the, the um, only render the components that we actually need. In Drupal, we've got this um, kind of meme. Uh, there's a module for that, so whatever you want to do, there's a module for that. So I, I kind of find so I wasn't very good at writing HTML years ago because I used Dreamweaver. I wasn't good at writing PHP uh, years ago because I was using Drupal because whatever I want to do, there's a module for that. Um, I wasn't good at JavaScript because I discovered jQuery. I'm probably not going to be good at React because <laughs> I'm using Gatsby and whatever I want to do, oh, there's a plugin for that. So uh, I, I wanted to say React or Gatsby is looking after my, my uh, routing for me. Uh, so when I get onto the SEO page or when I get onto the articles listing page, I want to have an active menu item. And that's pretty tricky on a, on a general static site. But with Gatsby, you just say active class name equals whatever. And then when you're over here, you can see part two is highlighted because I'm on the part two URL. If I click on link component, link component is highlighted. So that get, that gets gets built in. But we'll see later on, sub pages can also um, uh, in, inherit this as well. So we, we just give this a couple of uh, parameters. So it's a link and it gets an active class. And there's one other item about it, which actually that will come up later on. So that's not in this code. And then in the header component, we uh, imported the menu from our menu component, and then we used it uh, here. And we set it to menu class equals menu, menu light background, and men menu is mobile. And in the footer component, then it's pretty much the same, except we've we've had a class menu is not mobile. Um, and then in the layout component, so we can see a change on each page, we have now got the header here, and we've got the main body area here, and then we've got the footer here. So rather than hard coding, coding a footer, and if we, we're using props and things like that, we, we can actually have a different footer on every page depending on what data we want to we want to feed it. Um, okay, part two, just menu, footer, header, layout. Oh yeah, and we added SAS su su support as well. So wh when you install Gatsby initially, you've got a layout and a layout.css file. And the CSS file uh, has, it's actually quite 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 long with a lot, lot of stuff and I've, I've deleted it all. So I've just got some kind of standard class for myself. And to use that then within layout, you just import it at the top. So you, you, you import layout.css. To use SAS, you use the SAS plugin. Um, uh, and I think you add it to, yeah, you, you, you NPM require, or Gatsby require, whatever the SAS, SAS plugin is called. And then you say here at the plugins, you're just registered, Gatsby plugin SAS. And then you can use this directly. So in layout.js, I just changed import layout.css to import layout.scss, and that works. There's no there's no recompiling. There's no wondering where it goes. You just write your SAS directly into your SAS file and and uh, use it. Um, let's see. That's support for SAS. Okay. So let's look at part three next. So that's that's um, changing the look a little small. But now we're going to look at get check out part three. Uh, we're going to look at now at styled components. So this is where, where, where we write um, CSS in JS. Will we start an argument? How many people think that's a good idea? Okay, him. <laughs> uh, how many people have actually written CSS in JS and then decided no, it was a bad idea? Okay. I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence. I I like writing my CSS in a CSS file. At the same time, I kind of think yeah, it's just a file. And if I can if I can I can write SAS and I can write CSS in a JS file, what does the exten extension uh, really matter? Um, at the same time, I, time I, I can see the the benefits of um, and stop this again. I can see the benefits of CSS in JS because all 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 the brilliance of JavaScript, all the kind of variable stuff and all the props and all the um, mathematics and things we can do, we can use all those then as CSS properties. And I think there's a there's a lot to be said for that. Um, okay, so this looks a bit uglier now. Now it looks a bit better. So we've we, we've changed this a little bit here. Um, we've added a let's see part three. 
we've added typography.js. Now, this is a library uh, to control your line heights and to control your vertical rhythm and to control uh, your font sizes and, and things like, like that. And it works then across the website. And I, I was blown away by this. I, I installed this with, with, uh, using Gatsby. Uh, what, what you do is you, you do your whatever Gatsby require um, uh, topography JS. You change your Gatsby config file here to say uh, import typography here. And where you're going to find your typography file then is in my source directory in a directory called utils. In a, in a, there's a file called typography. So we see that here. Now, what we've done, what we do here then is there's, there's lots of themes that you can use. So if you want your website to look like, say, the WordPress 2019 theme, you can just uh, set that here, import typography from typography and tell it, use WordPress 2019 and install that as a plugin. There you go, it's done. It's kind of two lines of code. Uh, or you can, you, can, you can write your own um, uh, style sheet or you can, you can start with the WordPress one and over, overwrite some it items within it. So what I've said here is the base font size I'm going to use is 24 pixels. That was because I thought the screen was going to be kind of small and I wanted to make sure people could read what was on it. <laughs> um, and I'm going to say I'm going to have a baseline height of 1.5 and I'm going to have a scale ratio of 3. The scale ratio, if, if people don't know what this is, it, it, it means that the difference between my base font size and my H1, so my, my paragraph tag and my H1, is going to be 3. So if this is 24, 3 times 24 is 75 minus 3, 72. Um, so my H1 will be 72 and my H2 will be whatever proportion to that in H3, H4, and, and so on. And I've said that the header weight, so this is all the H1, H2, H3, etc., is going to be 400. And uh, then I've got these two variables here for a header font family and a body font family. So all my headings are going to use alpha slab 1. You can see that here. And all my body fonts are going to use Roboto. And you can see that here. And we're going to use Google Fonts. And to use any Google Font, you just write the name of the Google Font here and say what weights you want to use. And that's that's it. So if I, I want to change this from 24, we'll say it down to 16 pixels, pixels for my base font size because I now see the screen is fine and we can, can handle that. I click Save, come back to here, and there we go. Uh, we have down to 16 pixels now, and we can see this got, this got smaller. If I put this back to 24 pixels, now we've got 24 pixels on this, and this comes back up to 72 pixels. But if we change our uh, scale ratio then to, we'll say, 5, we'll, what we're going to see then is the body here size is not going to change, but this should increase. And that's how easy it is to have perfect vertical rhythm using Gatsby. I think that's, that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, so all, all we're going to do is just change whatever we want here and override things, and we can set all the different font parameters that, that we want. So as well as that, then we've got a styled component. Style components is uh, where you can, you get a component and you say what it's going to look like, and then you can import it anywhere else. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a CSS and JS um, library. It's, I think, the most co uh, common one for, for, for uh, React and for Gatsby and things. I just want to put this back to where it was at so that my build doesn't give me merge conflicts. And I'll delete this one here as well, just in case. Ah, it's not deleting. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll figure that out when it when it breaks. Um, so with style components, there, there's one thing I really liked about it. Uh, although I have a feeling some people would really hate this about it, but these headings here at the top, we can see these are all just H1, H2, H3 tags. Down here at the bottom, I have uh, used style components to. Uh, import, a, what, what I created my own component called a heading, and I import the heading as H1 or as H2. So all the headings will have the exact same markup, except using props, I can say that this one here is a, is a H2, but it could have a class of H3, let's say, for example. So as a H2, I want to look like a H3. Where this becomes uh, handy is where you would often have a button and a link that might um, might look the same. So you might have a sign up, sign up link to go to your sign up form. And on your sign up form, your button might look the exact same when, when it says register now or whatever it is. So here, for example, we've we've a, a normal button and a primary button. And uh, what I've said, said is just, this is a button, so we import a button. But on the second one, import button as uh, A. So it, instead of using button tag, it uses the A tag. And I think that's, that's pretty cool the way you can, you can swap elements like that. And then also, this button has its default styling. This button here has the exact same, same uh, uh, styling, except it's got a prop of primary. 
And then we say when it has a proper primary, change the background color and change the change the border and change the font color, but leave the padding and leave the spacing and margins all the same. So the, the code for that is <coughs> is where button JS. Okay. So we create this um uh uh const a variable here called we call it button and we say button is a styled dot button. Um, so it, it means that it's 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 a it's going to use the but the button tag, and then it's going to use style components to to change it. If we this uh, where is it? I might do it just here. So if you want to create a React component, you you can say const um, fe we'll call it equals styled style dot uh, h one, and then put in these two backticks. That's what creates the, the component first. Oh, sorry, two. So just in case you kind of didn't see them here because there's only one. And there's another one then down here. So then it's, it's between these two backticks that you write your, your styles into it. So we've said here that, that, that all buttons will have a background of 333, will have a border radius of this. I'm going to guess you can read CSS yourselves. And then that if it has a prop of primary, we're going to change the CSS to change the background to this color and change the foreground or the, the, te the font color to this here. And we can see then that's what happens down here. And then we just uh, uh, we'd react and we render out what, what actually happens when the button component is called. So in our styled components file, which is in pages, I think, in our styled components file here at the bottom, we've just imported the button component. And you can see here then here where we got uh, the heading element. Uh, we said the heading element is h1, the heading class is h2, and the heading element here is h2, and the heading class is h2, heading element here is h3, heading class is h2. So our h1, h2, and h3 can all have the exact same look and feel. Um, you can see it doesn't work for me. <laughs> I just I just didn't bother writing the h1, h2, h3 um, CSS. Uh, now this stuff down here, normal button, primary button, I think this is done very well. Uh, and I I know it's done very well because I just copied and pasted the code from stylecomponents.org. So if, if you want to see it, you get the exact same look and feel if you, if you just follow, <laughs> follow along with what, what they're doing. Um, okay, so that's part uh, three, I think, is it? Yep. And now this is where we get to the juicy stuff. This is the, the droopy things, and this is where things often break for me. So let's get check out part four. Okay, so like I said, in Drupal, there's a module for that. So anything you want to do, somebody else has solved the problem for you. The same in with Gatsby, anything I wanted to do so far, there's a plugin for that. Somebody has already solved the problem. So uh, for Drupal, we actually I probably have it written on the page here. Let's refresh this again. I'm unable to connect. Uh, Gatsby develop. Actually, we can look at this while it's, while it's going, yeah. Okay, so while this is in, is in, is uh, start, starting up, what we've 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 added the Gatsby plugin, we change our Gatsby uh, config file. That's here to say that there is a Drupal component somewhere here. So it it uses the oh, sorry it uses the Gatsby source Drupal plugin, and then the base URL. So where it's going to find the content is umami.local. And then we'll see some GraphQL queries in a second that, that it goes to umami.local and then it goes to the JSON pages that we need. So umami.local is here. So that's that's there. I had a few issues with this during the week because I missed an S for HTTPS and we spent two hours in the hotel room trying to fix my presentation because of an S. Um, okay. All right. Uh, <coughs> Where am I now? Part four dot js, okay, and part four here. Okay, so what's changed here? We're going to get data from Drupal. We're going to uh, uh, create a listings page for articles, and then we're going to create an individual article page, and then we're going to see that the routing and the URLs and things like that change. So you, you can hot link to any page within a website, even though there's there's nothing loading. Like this is this is a single page app. It doesn't look like a single page app. Uh, but there's, there's no 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 uh, page refreshes here at all. But you can see the URL does change. Um, part four. 
So in terms of Drupal, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get in, in, into this much because it's it's not really a Drupal conference that, that, that we're at, but there's a JSON API module. It's just become stable in core. So to to turn your whole website into a API first website, you go to the modules page, you click JSON API module, and that's it. You're finished. You've, you everything everything on your website, every menu item, every vocabulary, every taxonomy term, every node is is now available in JSON. So if I go here to uh, forward slash json api forward slash node which if you're not in the drupal uh, sphere that's kind of a page let's say in, in an individual article and then to slash article that's the name of the content type this lists all the articles that are on my website so there's i think there's 10 or something in it and then if you if you go to json api slash node slash article slash the id so this one here this will give you a json representation of one individual uh, page or one one one, one recipe <coughs> Okay, so um, in terms then of this, we go to the articles listing page. So we created a page here called articles. Uh, we import our, our different things we need here. So we needed layout, we needed SEO, we needed image to, to show the image and things like that. Here's our layout component, our SEO component. We've seen all this before. And then we've got this, this looks interesting. So this is this says it's, it's gonna get some data. Um, it's gonna, it's going to be called all node article now that's called all node article because that's what the gatsby drupal plugin has called it um and then it's going to map each of these articles um uh, using the what it's going to call edge so it's kind of a, a for each loop uh, this, this is the s6 syntax if people are, are kind of new to it so it's, it's going to get each of these and then it's going to render out a list item and the list item is going to have a h3 and that's going to link to whatever the path alias. So in Drupal, when I save the website, it gets a URL slug. So wh whatever that, that alias is, that's what it's gonna use for the title up here. So it, this will become article slash whatever the article title is. And then it's gonna have a um, an image. So we use the image component again. That's why we've imported that up here. It's gonna use the image. So whatever the uh, image that we've uploaded is, and it's gonna be a, um, a fluid image. And we'll, we'll have said somewhere else then to make sure that the maximum width is 300 pixels or 500 pixels, whatever it is. Uh, and after that, then it's going to dangerously set the inner HTML. So it's kind of be careful what you're doing here, folks. Uh, in, in, in terms of using Drupal, I know this is safe because I know the form API in Drupal is safe or fairly safe or people more clever than me have told me it's, it's, it's safe. So when my users enter content, I know it gets sanitized before uh, or you know, when, when you click save. Um, if this was something like a, a Google form and you're had it open to the public, you might not want to use the interesting set HTML because they could put in script tags or whatever. So we're, we're, we're going to split this or splice this at 25. This is at 25 words, not 25 characters. So we, we won't end up then with one word chopped off in half at the, at the end. So we're, we're going to, we're going to, after 25 words, um, stop whatever is in the body field. And then we're going to add three uh, ellipses for dot, dot, dot. So people will get the idea that there's some more to read. So let's have a, a quick look just then at what's gonna happen when we do that. So we, this is the article's listing page and you can see it's vastly different to this, but it's using the exact same content. Um, <clears throat> so there's our title and there's our body field and it stops at word number 25 and gets our three dots. And here's our small image. And if we click on give it a go and grow your own herbs, we can see that the URL up here then will go to forward slash articles forward slash Give it a grow and grow your own herbs. So <clears throat> that kind of routing is, is 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 done for us and looks very nice. And then we can style it uh, whatever way we want. And we can see then that we've got the same article here. View article. Of course, this looks a little bit better because we spent two three years building it. But uh, we'll, we'll get there. So let's look at the uh, GraphQL query for this. Um, articles.js there and down here we've got a query so the, we, we open up our graphql query we get to our parameter uh, all node article that's what what the people who created the gatsby drupal plugin decided to, to call it uh, if we've got a content type called page it will this will be all node page if we've got a content type called blog it will be all node blog uh, and there's a few things i want to get from this so i want to get the id of the um of of the node or of the, of of the of the of the page, I want to get the title of the page and I want to get the path alias. So this is the the slug of the page that we can append as our URL. Then I want to get the value of the body fields of whatever was in in the body field, and this gets printed out uh, with the p tags and the strong tags and everything. So it's it's not sanitized for Gatsby, but it gets sanitized in in Drupal. 
Um, and then I want to find out what time it was or what you know data was created. And then I want to get the image field and that's going to be served as a local file and it's going to have a max width of 400 pixels and it's going to have quality of 100. So don't reduce the quality. I don't want to 75% or 50% or things like that. Um, if we look at, at here, we've got a built-in... Is that okay to read? It's very small. We've got a built-in GraphQL server uh, as well with, with this. So this is this is really nice, I think. If we kill all this, let's say... Now, if we press Control and Space, it gives us a list of everything we can we can we can query with GraphQL that's available for our website. So we say we want to start a query here, and we hit Control and Space again. And so inside the query, what's available to us? Well, we can get files, we can get all files, we can get the site page. So let's have a look at uh, we'll say the site itself, and we'll query inside the site. So Control Space again. And we'll say, I want to get the site metadata. So this is going to be giving me back everything that's in this Gatsby config file that we saw earlier on. Uh, so let's run that query now. And we, we got this much here. And then I might want the, the title or whatever it is. And you, you can see that that's what got used in the header component where it, it, it pulled in the uh, the title. So we, and we change it here to Gatsby JS intro rather than Gatsby default starter. So if we're, we're, we're going to do the same here with uh, our Drupal stuff. So control space, all node. Article, I think it is A R T I C L. This looks like it's not going to work. Uh, yeah, I'm not clever enough. Hang on, there we'll find it here again. So it was all node article. Uh, looks right. Edges dot node e d g e s node. Let's run this and see what happens. Syntax error. Isn't that a pip? It's okay, I don't give up. All right, I'm gonna give up now. <laughs> we got an extra thing here, do we? Let's get rid of this one and this one. And let's just drop this one here and wouldn't that be easier? Okay. Right, that's not going to work for us. But what that should have done is, oh, do you know what did I? I did stop and start. Yeah, what, what that should have done is given us back our list of list of articles. What I'm trying to explain here is that the GraphQL query server thingy built into uh, in, into into Gatsby for, for us. It might even be part of React. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and when we drill down through through our data, whatever we get here, that's how we how we know what we can query in our file itself. So we can just we can take that query from 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 the interface and just copy and paste it into here. So this gets us that far in terms of an article's listing page and giving us article teasers. Oh, I can put this back to you there. But how about then the individual article itself? Because these articles aren't pages. So we, we don't create a page inside our source slash pages directory for every single uh, page on our website. Because if we did, we'd have a huge amount. And if we wanted to edit one, we, we'd have to you know uh, uh, edit a hundred of them. We'd have to go back and change them all individually. So what we do instead with this is for um, for an individual page from our articles is we, we uh, use the index.js file. So that's... that's um, already work, sorry, it's the layout uh, a file. And then we've created a new directory somewhere here called templates, um, images, pages, templates. And I've said here for article.js, so for an individual article itself, this is what I want to render. So I want to render a H1 with the article title. I want to render when it was published. And I want to render then the uh, main image that we have. And then I want to set the HTML as the article body. And we've got a second query here to say that, um, that when when you when you look 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 for these you 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 get the the title the body value and when it was the same kind of same kind of query except it, it's for one specific um, uh, article using the ID that we created from the articles or where is it um, got to be config here oh this is gonna make me look silly somewhere we <laughs> I created an ID where is it articles that js Maybe I wrote some notes for myself. Hang on now. Uh, part four. Gatsby. Add this is Gatsby config. Create articles in dark. No, I didn't. So 
uh, if I was to continue on and pretend that didn't happen. So <laughs> I, there's somewhere I've, I've said where, where the idea is, and th that's what allows us to render the page. But what happens here then is that that um, we we in the articles when you have the link and it links to oh, I'm after doing something here. Li links to it links to, to the alias. It then goes to the templates directory and it says inside the body where we were using the index.js inside there, uh, render this template. So if we want to change all of our articles now, we can just go back and change that, that one template. And we can do that then for, for um, our articles. We can do it again for our blog or we can do it again for our recipes and, and whatever else. So we, we could have four or five different templates that we want there. And they'll all use the parent layout and the parent layout then will inject just that template into, into our body area. Um, I think actually that's it for that, yep, and then we'll kill that development server. So actually, oh, it's probably going to stop. There is it. Yeah, you can see here we've got React running. This is a little React plugin. If I click on this, it tells us that we're not using the production build of React. And if we inspect elements down here, we've got this React um, console area here. This gives us all the different React parts we have. So any website that uses React, if you if you install this React uh, Dev Tools um, uh, plugin. You can start investigating what they've done. You can see how how Instagram is built. You can see how Facebook is 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 built. So now that we've we've stopped this, we're we're going to now build our production version of the website. So that's as simple as we run Gatsby. I say it's as simple as we run Gatsby build, but I've probably broken something. And this is going to take maybe seven seconds, eight seconds or so, and that's it done and dusted. We've got ourselves a static website now with all the production ready CSS, all the production ready JavaScript with our responsive images and, and whatever else. Uh, if this isn't finishing, it's probably because I've changed, I changed something and broke a, broke a file maybe. Um, and then, okay, that looks like, like it worked. And then we can actually see our Gatsby uh, serve. Now this is going to load up uh, port 9000 instead of 8000 and let us look at our website in a production environment. So you can see this red tag here to say we're not using production uh, React. And it's going to be slow and things like that. So this is 9,000 here. We refresh this page. And this is nice and clean here now because this page is using the production build of React. And if we look at the source code, then we can see that everything that's needed for this page is hard-coded now directly into the page. And it's all in one line of code. And it'll be very, very fast. So we can come here and look at, copy and paste that in. Command K M HTML and beautify. So there's everything I need for this for this one page, all all in that one file. So there's the uh, all the HTML I'm going to need, and all the JavaScript is somewhere else, probably at the bottom or wherever that that goes, and uh, then the actual content itself, and things are preloaded, things are using async, things are. Uh, it just it just kind of does everything everything you need in one place. So once you have have those files done like that, so that's up here in the public directory. Then you can you can you can uh, serve these to GitHub pages, or you can serve this to Netlify or whatever. And it means that you've got a tiny little code base, and it also means you can get a full replica of your website every time you you do a deployment. So if you want to re revert back to what it was like when the website was working, let's say it's just reverting back back a commit. And I think that that's great. If, if you're at Phil's uh, talk earlier on, he, he was talking about that that, that every Every deployment can take the full state of the server and everything along, along with it. So it's not just like that, oh, the code hasn't changed, but you can see the code hasn't changed and the server hasn't changed and things like that. Okay, my time is up. Sorry. <laughs> uh, do we have Q&A time? Or are we uh, up, up? We might have 40 seconds for um, q &A. I'm happy to take none. <laughs> yeah. um, right, okay. Uh, can we have a huge round of applause, first of all? Thank you. Oh gosh, right, okay. Um, well, that was absolutely fascinating, that was. I loved it. This was uh, very important for me because I think I'm doing a similar kind of thing right now. Headless Drupal and Gatsby. Um, I think we've got a quick one um, which reflects a few of the different questions we've had about images. Why would somebody use a sharp module in place of the Drupal image manipulation system? Because you're not serving your images from Drupal anymore. It's, this is going to go to Drupal and get the original version of the image. So if, if you, if you, you're only going to get one version of the image uh, for Gatsby, that's going to go into your images, images directory to be used. So if you use a crop tool in Drupal and you crop your image to 500 pixels by 400 pixels, 
and you tell Gatsby that's the image you want to use, well, if you want to use a hero image that's 2,000 pixels wide, it's going to be creating that hero image from your 500 pixel wide image. So you, you need, a, it's the same as with Drupal. Drupal will use the original image to create the, the derivatives. And with Gatsby, the same thing you want, you tell it, go get the original image, please, and create the derivatives from that. So you're moving it from the editor interface, so um, from there into the code interface. Instead. Yeah, yeah. If, if, you're, if you're talking Gatsby and Drupal, you've got to start thinking of, of Drupal as a content store, not, not okay. as a layout engine, not as anything to do with your images. Just this is how I get my images onto a server. And then you let Gatsby do the, do the actual manipulation for it. And if you want Drupal to be your front end, then you can let Drupal do the manipulation for it. Okay, cool. Right, I think that's all, all time we have questions. Another huge round of applause, please. Thank you.